Good evening, everyone. My name is Tim Shear. Welcome to our Sure Success Emotional Mastery class. Tonight is on relationships and how to bring the sizzle back into your relationships, how to create that passion inside. So if you ever find that um, you're having a difficult time in your relationships, and, and most anybody in a relationship will say, yes, I know what that's all about, uh, we're going to discuss how that starts to happen, how communication breaks down, and what you can start to do very quickly to bring the passion back, to be able to reconnect with those around you and, uh, and feel like you guys can, can feel uh, that connection again, or you can feel strong, or you can feel like this person is someone who you really love and you really care about. It can be an intimate person, it could be a, a friendship, it could be um, uh, between you and a, and a parent, or um, you and a sibling. You know, relationships come in all forms. So, because we were around Valentine's Day, I thought it would be fun to, to focus on uh, our intimate relationships, but you can use these tools for any kind of relationship. So, what goes wrong? Why is the divorce rate at 54%? Well, one of the reasons why is because we have a breakdown of communication. We do not know how to communicate with ourselves, let alone our partner, and so we end up feeling frustrated and upset inside, and we end up um, stressing our partner out as well. And I'm going to explain how that happens in just a moment. When I work with couples, and I've worked with a lot of couples over the years, this is a good metaphor. What I find is you have two people that come together and they're both carrying an empty cup. And they walk up to each other with their empty cups and they say, fill me up. And you cannot give what you don't have. So you say, fill me up from your partner. Your partner doesn't fill you up because they don't know what you want or they're not sure of what you need even though they're supposed to know what you want. They're supposed to know what you need. Whether you say what you need or not, whether you ask for what you want or not, you know, a lot of times we think it's very obvious what we want and what we need when in fact it's not obvious at all to our partner. And so in our mind, instead of realizing that we need to communicate more effectively, what we do is we get mad at them because we feel like they don't care about us. You know, if, if you don't do this and this and this, it means you don't love me or it means you don't care or I don't feel validated. Where the other person's going, what are you talking about? I constantly do that. There's a miscommunication here because we're not clear on what the rules are. We're not clear on what we really want. And as a result, we might want the same exact thing. But we're coming at it from different angles. And as a result, we keep missing each other. So you say, fill me up. And the other person can't because they don't know what to do. And they're also at the same time asking you to fill them up. And you're not doing that either. Often, you're not focused on filling them up anyway. We're focused on them filling us up. And as a result, you have two people that are both hurting. And when we're feeling hurt, we tend to do one of two things. We either run away and hide, or we get aggressive and fight. And often, you know, in the relationship, one will get quiet and go away, and the other one will get louder and escalate. And, you know, it can be the man or the woman doing either roles. You know, the... Uh, John Gray from Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus talks about how men will go in their caves. They shut down, they go within, they just get quiet. Okay? And what they do is they feel sorry for themselves most of the time. They go into their own mind and they have this self-pity game. Oh God, how long is this going to go on? And oh, she's just going to go on forever. And oh, hey, she's hysterical again. Or oh, I'm never, I'm never good enough. No matter what I do, it's never enough. And we start to go into the self-pity game. Now the woman can do this too. She can go into the self-pity game and feel like a martyr. I had someone tell me the other day, she said, instead of messing up my relationships all the time by blaming my spouse, I decided to get off my cross and use the wood to start a fire in our passionate relationship. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's an interesting metaphor. <laughs> you know. So, uh, Because if you're in your head feeling sorry for yourself, then you're not focused on what you can do to create a solution. Most of the time when I start to coach uh, couples, instead of focusing on this is what we want to get to, instead of doing that, what they want to talk about is why they're justified in feeling the way they're feeling. And all the reasons for why they should feel the way they feel. So they go in with a whole list, kind of like an attorney, to prove their case of why they're right in being miserable, instead of looking for how do I want the outcome to be which is the thing that we need to go to immediately. Because when I'm working with couples, the man or the woman, a lot of times I'll say, what do you want your relationship to be? And they'll say, well, I don't want this and I don't want that. And then they'll go right into, the man or the woman, they'll go right into, 
Um, you know, all the reasons why they're upset, all the reasons why they're frustrated, all the reasons why they're unhappy and why they're justified to feel this way. And of course, that doesn't do anything except make the problem feel bigger. So we need to make the problem feel smaller and make the solution bigger so that we can move towards what we want. Otherwise, it's like trying to drive somewhere, driving like this. Okay? Only focused on what's happened. Never getting to where you're going because you have no idea where it is because you're not looking at what outcome you want. You're looking at how it's been or how you're currently feeling. And it's very easy to get caught up in how we're feeling. But remember, feelings can lie. Feelings can lie. You might have feelings that are not accurate. You can very much feel a certain way based on facts and information that is askew, that is not objective. You've just run it through your set of filters, your set of beliefs and attitudes and life experiences, which are really a bunch of opinions. So the only reason that you feel any way is because of what you're saying to yourself and what you're picturing in your mind. So what we have to focus on are the beliefs that you have and the rules that you're living your life by. And if they're not getting you what you want, you've got to change them. As Tony Robbins says, uh, Tony Robbins always talks about how you have your blueprint or your set of rules for how you think sh life should be, and then the game or the reality or how it is. So you take how you think it should be and you compare it to how it is, and if they're real close, then you're happy. And if they're very different, then you're upset. And if they're very different and you feel like you can't do anything to change it, then you're depressed. And so we have to look at our rules and how it is and change one of them. We have to change our situation or we have to change what we expect to have happen. And it's different for everybody. Sometimes you have to change the situation you're in. Other times you have to change your expectations. I've heard people say a lot of times, you know, oh, I wish I had a time machine. I wish I could go back and do things differently. I wish I would have made different choices. That is a trap. All that's doing is causing you to look backwards again and feel sorry for yourself and focus on how, you know, things should be different but they're not and you can't do anything about it and then that's what gets people depressed and then they start fighting or fleeing. Instead, we start to focus on what can I do right now to look at things differently? What is the outcome that I want? How would I like it to be? So I can start to move towards that. Now a common excuse that comes up is, well, I'm doing all this stuff and my partner isn't doing anything. Now that may be the case, it may not be the case. I mean, there's always two sides to everything. No matter how thin you slice it, there's always two sides. So it could be very much that you're always trying to contribute and your partner isn't doing it that much. But maybe it's the way that you communicate or maybe it's the approach that you're using Think of it this way, maybe you're not speaking your partner's language. What if you speak English and your partner speaks Spanish? And you're in English pleading and pleading and pleading, but because they don't speak English, they don't understand what you're saying. So you're sitting there, I've been all day long speaking all this English. You know, and your partner's over there going, no comprende. Because the miscommunication is happening. I find that if you start to understand why people are behaving in the way that they are and what they really want, then it, get, it allows you to approach things in a different way. What if you're looking at your partner and your partner is screaming and yelling at you and all you did was look at it as them screaming and yelling and you go in your own mind and you start to feel sorry for yourself and you start to get mad, you start to defend yourself, you know where that's going to lead. But what if your partner is yelling and screaming and you realize that what they're really doing is they're trying to get your attention because they're hurting, because they're scared, because they feel lonely, because they feel totally alone in the world and they're looking for support from you and they're not feeling it and they're trying to get your attention and they don't know any other way except to escalate and get loud and get in your face and it's the only way they know how to do it.